All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can cache data on the client side within a Nuxt application. Now, caching data on the client side is pretty easy thanks to the get cache data method provided to us by the Nuxt library. And using this method will allow you to easily cache your data and avoid unnecessary calls to an API for your users on the client side. Now, I went ahead and put together a little diagram for how caching data on the client side within Nux will work. So the first thing you'll do is you'll make a request to your page on the client side. And wherever you fetch data within that page, either using the use fetch or use async data composable, we have an option to use a function called get cache data. Now, the first thing we want to do within that function is check to see if we even have any cache data or not. So if we don't have any cache data, we'll just simply do what you're going to do anyways and fetch that data. Now, if we do have cache data, then what we want to do is make sure our data is valid. So we're going to set and then check an expiration time to have a window for how long we want our data to be valid. So if that data is valid, then we can return that cache data and we can display that on our page. Now, if the data is invalid, then simply what we're going to do is fetch the data as we normally would within either our use fetch or use async data composable. All right, so to demonstrate how to cache data within a Nuxt application, I went ahead and put together a little demo. So inside of the script tag, what we're doing is pretty simple. We have the use async data composable. We're going to get a random number between 1 and 30, and we're going to store it inside of this variable called slug. And then we're going to use the fetch utility to reach out to what is called the dummy JSON API and get a random recipe using our slug that we have right here. And inside of the template, we're just going to create a little card that's going to have the name of the recipe and also the image. And if we scroll over to the browser, you can see we have something that looks like this. And if we go over to the about page and then back to the home page, you can see we're going to get a new random recipe. Now, instead of retrieving a brand new recipe each time a user navigates to this page on the client side, what we can do is cache the previous recipe for somewhere between 30 and 60 seconds. And then instead of reaching out to the API in that short span of time, we can retrieve that cache data and display that recipe. And then after the 30 to 60 seconds, if they do navigate back, then we can retrieve a brand new recipe. Now, back inside of our project, the first thing that we want to do is define the get cache data function. So how we do this is we can provide a second param within our composable or the use async data composable that is. And then we can define some options. And one of the options is this get cache data function. And this also accepts a param, which we'll call key. Now, within this function, what we want to do is get a reference to the cache data that we may have. So how we do this is we first want to create a variable and we're going to call this Nuxt app. And then we're going to set this equal to the use Nuxt app composable. And what we want to do is create a variable and we'll just call this data. And then we want to set this equal to the Nuxt app. And then we have reference to something called the payload. And then we have the data. And then on here, which is an array, we want to reference our key that we have as a param within our get cache data function. And then we also want to do an or operator. And we're going to reference the Nuxt app once more. And then we'll say static. And then we'll do data. And then once again, we'll pass our brackets for our array. And then we'll say key. And this will give us access to any cache data if we have any. Now, how this function works is if you return back false, then it's going to initiate a fetch. However, if you return back the cache data, then it's going to use that instead of performing a fetch. So we can see this if we then just do a return and we say data like this. So if we have any cache data, it's going to use it instead of making this request right here. And back inside of our app, if we go to the about page and then back to the home, you can see we still have the same recipe. However, if we just return back nothing, which is like saying return back false and we save this and then we go back to the about page and back to the home, you can see it's then going to request or fetch a new recipe. OK, so let's remove this return statement. And what we want to do is we only want to initially return out of this if we don't have any cache data and this data variable is false. So what we can do is say if and then if the data is false, then we want to return and then we want to initiate a fetch. Now, we don't want to keep the same cache data forever when a user is on the application. So we want to set up a way to expire that data and then refetch it after a certain amount of time. 
Now, to set something like this up, we'll need to reference when our data was fetched. And the easiest way to do this is after this request has been made, we can transform the result and we can add a timestamp to our fetch data. And how we can do that is within the options, we can use another function called transform. And within this transform function, we can reference the payload from our result that we made with our request. So what we wanna do is we want to return a new object and we want to return the entire request. So first off, we'll just do a spread operator and we'll say payload. And within this, we also want to create our timestamp. So we can create a new property. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this fetched at. And then we just want to set this equal to a new date. And now within our cache data, we're going to have this fetch that property, which is going to be the date at which the time the data was fetched. And then we can reference this to set up some sort of expiration to check to see if our data is within a certain time window. And to set this up, what we first want to do is create a new variable and we'll call this expiration. And then we want to set this equal to a new date. And then what we want to pass inside of here is going to be our fetch that timestamp. So we can reference this by saying data and then we have fetch that. And what we want to do next is set how long we want to have our expiration be. So in this example, we're just going to be using 30 seconds. So what we can do is we can reference our variable of expiration and then we can use the set time method. And within here, we can reference again our expiration variable, and we can use the get time method to get the time. And since we're going to be doing 30 seconds, what we want to do is say plus 30. And then we also want to times this by 1000 because this is in milliseconds. And what this is going to do is it's going to reference the fetch that timestamp that we have, and it's going to set it to 30 seconds in the future. And then what we want to do is we want to create another variable, and we're going to call this is expired and then we can set this equal to expiration dot get time and we just want to see if this is less than the current time so we can say less than and then do date dot now and then what we want to do is check to see if our variable of is expired is true and if it is then we just want to refetch our data so what we can do is do an if check and we'll do is expired so this is true we just want to return back false and if this is not true, that means we have our cache data and it's within the expiration window. So we can just do return and then our data. And now back here inside of the application, if we go to our about page and then back to the home page, you can see that we're going to have the same recipe. But if we go back to the about page and we wait about 30 seconds, then we should see a new recipe get fetched because it'll be outside of the 30 second window. And about 30 seconds has passed, so if we go back to our home, you should see now we have a new recipe and a new request to our API was made. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you did find it helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're new for more content like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.